I'm Simon Jano from the Marriottful Yoga Centre and I'm here with Stephanie Quirk just to ask a few questions. Stephanie, the first question I wanted to ask was about standing poses. You know, why do we start with them? Why do we do so many of them? Why well, yeah, so many of them? Um, we do a lot of standing poses in our method of yoga actually and we do start there. We do start training the student through standing poses a big part of it is because essentially they, in a standing pose, in that upright standing position, they're more uh, orientated. They're much more orientated, uh, obviously as to do with left and right, what is up, what is down, what is front, what is back. But with that orientation, in the first place, it stabilizes their intelligence. They're, familiar with it. As human beings we have evolved to stand up on our legs. Because we're standing up, because the head is above everything else, we are more alert, more intelligent. We can catch what the teacher says. We can understand, cognize and follow what the teacher says because it speaks to our intelligence because the head is above the heart, is above the navel. So there mm. is this, this aspect which what happened to us as we were evolving as human beings we we evolved up onto our legs and that's when our mind really evolved that's where our awareness really evolved and that process is still happening mm. we're, st we're still in that process as human beings and so it's it's just the best place to start because the student can cat is more liable to catch and understand you find if you, if say for instance, if you have a student doing a back bend, doing something like Vivarita Dandasana, yeah, and they haven't been trained to move their mind in the body, to mm. touch particular places in the body, already in poses like standing poses, they're going to be completely disorientated. To try and give them instructions in a back bend they will be disorientated. They will not know how to touch that part of themselves. So standing poses is the beginning place. And often when you, when you teach beginners, there's, there's, there's a real transformation, even really early on mm. from, you know, even from the beginning of their first class to the end of their first class. Yes. Like, it's almost like there's a different group of people standing in front of you. You know, yes. it's quite a strong, yes. Uh, when you teach a lot of beginners and you watch that a lot, it's quite a stark contrast yes. and it's a really yeah. It's really visible. I think if you do it Well, and you know the students get it. It's it's a strong mm. change that happens mm. quite quite quickly mm. They accomplish something. Yeah, and it's real and it's substantial. Yeah, so there's that sense of accomplishment there's that identification of themselves as having managed and understood it and in that they have managed and understood something very new about themselves and that's what yoga is meant to be doing and the, you know with standing poses they're i guess they're expansive so the the, the arms are extending the legs are extending and that mm -hmm. seems to be mm -hmm something which looks very new to them mm -hmm. you know they're not used to mm -hmm. extending a leg mm -hmm. extending an arm mm -hmm. and that it's it's almost like you're bringing them out into these mm -hmm. kind of outer parts mm -hmm. of themselves which have kind of mm -hmm. become very foreign yeah. or and, and it seems to change something yeah. in them one it's very real it's very concrete but um i tell you something it's uh if i can explain it perhaps by giving you the opposite opposite example Often we, if we have a person who is perhaps fixated on disturbing thought in their own mind, if we can help them to feel their awareness right to the fingertips, mm. right down to the feet, right out to the fingertips, it literally takes that with it and spreads it instead of it all uh, pulling them and uh, sinking them and pulling them down because of the gravitational pull of those disturbing 
thought forms, mm. just the sheer act of extending consciousness out to the peripheral body is extending the awareness. And so the, the kinks mm. or the disturbances literally get smoothed out. Mm. Beginners classes often, they're hard work because there's lots of standing poses, but when you look at the people's faces at the end of the class, when they're in Shavasana, they're mm. in their quiet pose, mm. It's a lot's happened. A lot's yeah. changed. The, the the face is different. The yeah. the, the head looks yeah. quieter yeah. because the face is quieter. Yeah. It's kind of pulled them out of yeah one out of complexity. Yeah, yeah. To Into, simpleness or something or well, you know that we've got this concept of the the touchstone or the the stone by which you you test and measure gold. You know, to test the purity of something. There's a way of actually of actually doing that. What happens to them? What happens to them as they work through those very simple standing poses to start off with is that it so demands that they engage themselves on every aspect of, them, of themselves mm. that they no longer are, what can I say, displaced outside of themselves. They exist like there is an alignment, but there's now an alignment between the body and the mind and the intelligence and the breath and the energy it's the standing poses you can't do them mm. unless you bring all those together so if they are taught well if they're systematically taught well what happens is they actually get a, a an experience of the true self rather than the distorted or the self full of worries and concerns mm. and so all of those things are washed away from them mm. they're kind of innocent they just really finally exist in their body